uh, respected sirs and ma'am, my name is Megana Shaini. I'm a second year postgraduate. I'm from Usmania Medical College. My topic is role of imaging in pediatric embryonal tumors. First of all, I would like to thank Indian Radiology for giving me this opportunity. Coming to the introduction part, the embryonal tumors constitute a major part in the pediatric group of population. Though they can occur at any age, they usually occur within five years of age, according to the literature. Then incidence is very uh, regarding age and gender is a very important thing in arriving at a diagnosis. And the radiology plays in characterizing these tumors. However, it plays some pitfalls in arriving at a specific diagnosis. My aim of the study is uh, to include the embryonic, embryonal uh, originated tumors as a differential in pediatric age group of population and to mention entities where the embryonal tumors have been diagnosed as non-embryonal tumors and uh, some entities where their diagnosis as embryonal tumors and uh, when the embryonal tumors are uh, diagnosed as even a non-neoplastic etiology and what is the incidence of embryonal tumor in relation to the gender and age. So 15 children were included in this study under the age of 14 years for about one year. All biopsy proven cases of the embryonal tumor is irrespective of the system it, it, it is involving. And the children with non-embryonal tumors and the wrongly diagnosed embryonal tumors uh, from radiology have been excluded. And uh, there were some uh, uh, images where the uh, image quality have been uh, severely compromised due to the motion artifacts. They're also excluded and the study has been excluded. And 15 children were advised to play in a contrast CT using Canon 6 slide CT. So the, my results are, uh, so the study population is 50 under the age of 14, uh, study period is one year. Out of the, the 50 children who are diagnosed with embryonal tumors, 38 are, are abdominal presented with abdominal masses, 10 presented with the brain masses, and two presented with the thoracic masses. So coming to the, in, in our, under the abdominal tumors, we got BIMS, 20 cases of BIMS, eight cases, uh, out of the 20 cases of the BIMS, 17 uh, children were male and three children were female and we got eight cases of the neuroblastoma where seven were male and one was female under the five cases of the retroperitoneal teratoma where uh, we got all females we have a one case of mesenchymal hematoma of the liver in a female there are three cases of the hepatoblastoma where all which were present in all males and one case of embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma of the cpd uh, we saw that case in a male and coming to the brain tumors, uh, we came across medulloblastoma and the peanut. We saw eight cases of medulloblastoma in, in males. I mean, uh, all the children were males. And uh, we saw two cases of the peanut tumors uh, in all, uh, where uh, all the children were males. We got two cases of the pleuroperinary blastoma under the chest tumor. So we saw all those two cases in the males. So coming to the how the embryonal tumors have been uh, initially diagnosed as the mesenchymal hematoma, the children actually came with, uh, with abdominal distension when the ultrasound was scanned. There's a multiloctated lesion in the liver, which we surely thought it was hydrolysis, and a likely abscess was given as a report. Uh, but when we saw it, when we do when we did a CECD, uh, it, it was uh, there were some enhancing components of the lesion. Then uh, we thought it was a tumor. The biopsy came out to be mesenchymal hematoma, and there are two solid astrocytoma. There is no mural nodule, the, which of, there is no cystic component. That's why uh, we thought it was a medulloblastoma, but uh, it was turned up to be astrocytoma, which is very solid, which has uh, didn't get any cystic component. One peanut was uh, diagnosed as ependymoma. Though supraventricular ependymoma is very rare because of the, but uh, the chunky, large and chunky calcification nature was uh, actually uh, gave, gave us a diagnostic dilemma. And embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma, uh, actually the child was a five-year age male and uh, he has ascites in the abdomen and uh, there is some solid components noted at the hilum in the ultrasound. Thought it was some necrotic lymph nodes. Uh, we did CT, then also we thought it was a uh, necrotic lymph nodes, but the biopsy, I'm sorry, not biopsy, the ascitic fluid analysis and uh, then the CP net, everything came or came negative for the TB. Then we did the biopsy of the hilar region. We came out to be as embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma. Actually, there is we didn't face any diagnostic alamo and diagnostic blastoma. Uh, so when coming to the incidence of the tumors under the abdominal tumors, films and neuroblastoma constitutes the majority. And in the brain tumors, medulloblastoma constitutes the majority. And uh, we had got we didn't get enough cases of the chest tumors uh, to comment about it, but uh, uh, this actually this incidence actually goes with the literature. Uh, except and the median age of the presentation is films around 4.5, neuroblastoma around five. 
and teratoma 3.5 lesion camel hematoma below the one year of age and hepatoblastoma two years amniotic rhabdomyosarcoma we got it five years of age medulloblastoma at four and pnet at 2.5 years of age and pluripulmonary blastoma three years gender distribution except for the retroperitoneal teratoma and mesenchymal hematoma everyone got a male preponderance but the thing is the retroperitoneal teratoma and mesenchymal hematoma are more seen in females that can be because we didn't uh, we didn't have enough cases uh, to comment to actually comment about the gender distribution but in our study we saw them in females come on to the some of the examples uh, this is an actual ct section uh, showing a lot heterogeneously enhancing lesion in the right front of temporal region and uh, it is showing the a uh, lot of calcifications uh, the, this large tumor have been having a mass effect on the ventricle that's why there is an hydrocephalic upstream hydrocephalus and there is also a mass effect in the form of a midline shift so this is actually usually we thought it is a supratentorial ependymoma because of the large and chunky calcification nature of the lesion next is retroperitoneal teratoma uh, here there is an uh, uh, heterogeneously hypodense lesion in the retroperitoneum with the uh, fatty areas and the areas of the calcifications uh, we are going we are seeing here and it is actually displaced in the kidney downwards perhaps it came to be retroperitoneal teratoma next is uh, mesenchymal hematoma of the liver here we are seeing a very large hypodense uh, uh, lesion when compared to the liver and uh, there is a uh, cystic areas uh, within it actually in the contrast these uh, there is actually enhancement of the solid part of the lesion but uh, they were not uh, shown here because of the gross motion artifacts and we saw this case in a female this is a bens tumor this is an heterogeneously enhancing lesion we are seeing and uh, which is actually cross in the midline and there are some areas of the non enhancement is there and the organ embedded sign of the left kidney is uh, positive Next, there is a large lobulated retroperitoneal mass lesion uh, in the in the actually in the left adrenal region, and it is actually showing the calcification with areas of the non-enhancement, and it is causing encasement of the celiac uh, vessels and SMA artery, and there was also a left moderate hessian due to the mass effect of the lesion. Uh, there is an heterogeneously hypodense solid lesion noted at the hilum region of the liver, which is showing the heterogeneous enhancement of the contrast with non-enhancing areas like the necrosis, and uh, the CBD is dilated with the enhancing solid component within it. This is the case we initially thought it as a TB uh, because these are these thought to be necrotic lymph nodes, and because there is also an ascites. And there is a large heterogeneously enhancing hypodense solid lesion noted in the inferior aspect of the right lung. Turned out to be pluripulmonary blastoma. These are my references. Thank you.